Good night, Chris. How are you going? How, any, any message for your, your supporters and your subscribers, sir? I'm, I'm happy to be outside. How does it feel to be out tonight? Feels good. Feels good. Yeah. I, I have faith that uh, the justice system will do me right. Oh, thank you. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this is a story that we have been following since last week. Popular Canadian YouTuber Christmas List arrested in Trinidad and Tobago. So as you can see, these are some of the first images of Chris coming out of jail in Trinidad and Tobago. And we have the first interview that he did coming out of jail. So we're going to take a look at it and going to have a discussion right after this. Do you have any regrets about the type of content that you did that? No, not at all. This is my country, 128. So I've been to 128 countries doing exactly what I've done here. Now, most people are YouTubers or content creators or journalists, whatever wording you want to use, they leave the country out of fear that maybe somebody they hit, interview might come after them. Uh, I'm very proud of the content that I create. Uh, I feel like I'm giving a voice to the people that are, are not often heard. Even till right now, I'm, in my eyes, I'm not guilty of any crime, uh, so I will not be pleading guilty. Um, I'm ready to continue on with this, I don't know if you want to call it a battle, but I have great hopes that uh, the judicial system here will, will find me innocent. Um, so I have no, I, I don't look back and say I should have changed something. Okay, so in that video, Chris stated that he is very confident in the Trinidad and Tobago justice system that, you know, he will beat the case. That's pretty much what he's saying. Um, I'm not sure where he got the confidence from if the lawyers, you know, by speaking to his lawyer, like his lawyer have been able to, to give him the utmost confidence that this case, like they have no reason to charge him on anything. But another thing that I'm, I'm thinking about is that he stated in one of the interviews that um, police wanted to question him to help them with, with some case. Um, in Trinidad and Tobago, there are three rival gangs. Like those gangs are pretty, I would say within the last five to 10 years, these gangs um, just popped up out of Trinidad and Tobago. You know, one of the gang, the, the sixth gang, is pretty much like a replica of a gang, a group in Jamaica, um, the six, uh, a dancehall group. Um, but the thing about what I don't understand is that the, he went and he interviewed uh, members of these three rival gangs. Um, so my thing is that for Chris, like, shouldn't he be more concerned about the gang members trying to come and get him? Because as stated, the police wanted him to help with investigation, apparently to help bring down these gangs. So I believe that it is a very dangerous thing to be in Trinidad right now. And he stated that he wanted to go and continue um, vlogging you know, doing his, his, his YouTube vlogs. But I would advise Chris to, to stay put. You know, he's staying at his lawyer's house, but I don't think it's a wise decision to go out there vlogging when the three rival gang members, which he interviewed, police want to bring those gangs down and want to use his content to help to bring those gangs down. So just tell me what you think in the comment section. Should, you know, Chris be staying put? Should he be on the police guard or something? And there is a, another voice note that um, we're going to listen to. 
Hey, Bravo. We were doing the interview at the TV station. The phone rang, <laughs> and it was a police officer, Prasad, and he said, I'd like to talk to Chris. So the phone was handed to me on speaker so we could both hear. He said, I need you to help me assist in the investigation. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, investigation. They said, we think you have information that you could help. I said, sir, there's nothing I can do that can help. Anything I've videotaped that's uploaded to YouTube, you're welcome to use it, however you please. No, no, come in for questioning, we need your help. I said, I'm going in for an interview, there's nothing I can do. He said, are you sure this is the way you want to go about it? Something along those lines. So I took that as a threat. So when the interview was done on TV, I asked my driver to drive me to the Canadian Embassy. I went in and out of the embassy in 15 minutes, nobody was there, but they must have tapped Bravo's phone um, because by the time I was finished the embassy, undercover police were already outside. I didn't tell anybody I was going to the embassy. He said, again, I want to, my supervisor, I want you to come in right now to assist with the criminal matter. I said, my criminal, criminal matter? They said, no, but you can assist. I said, sir, I don't know anything that you're talking about. The same thing. I have nothing else to say. Anything I know has been uploaded to YouTube. Now, when I was in with the embassy, the, the recommendation was to get on the quickest plane to get out of here. I don't know if they knew something. I don't know. I don't know. So the plan was the next morning to leave. But I woke up 6.45 or 7 in the morning with the police knocking at the door. And that's when they started throwing all these charges at me. My belief is just that I wouldn't help them. And it's not that I wouldn't help them. It's that I had nothing, nothing to do with any crime. Okay, so that was that was the voice the, the the voice recording. And what is interesting is that I would say over the past year or two, the Caribbean have become like this hotspot for YouTubers coming from all over the world. You know, we have seen um, David from from Florida. Dave's been here. We have seen the like Wadamaya from from Ghana. We've we've seen the Mongo from from Kenya. So a lot of um, YouTubers are Im um, emerging onto the Caribbean, and we realize that you know a lot of the, they are well supported in the Caribbean. Whenever the videos are shot in the Caribbean, it, it receive a lot of views, a lot of comment. Um, but one of the discussion that is going on online is the difference with how the African YouTubers um, portray the Caribbean as opposed to um european or white youtubers and this is one of the the i would say controversy that's happening in the youtube space that when the african africans come to the caribbean they try and 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 and, and show more of the culture and the positive aspect of the caribbean and as we see with um christmas lists we see a lot of his content is going into some of the dark places like wherever he goes. And we saw that with also with a YouTuber, um, Tammy or, 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 or Timmy, um, he was in Trinidad like a month or two ago and his views are like millions, you know? So that's a conversation that's happening online. Like why is it that, you know, the African YouTubers, they want to showcase the positive side, even though they go into the, the, the poor areas, they try and show the positive side of those areas. But for whatever reason, when like white YouTubers go, they show the slums, they show the guns, they show, you know, so that is a conversation that's going on online. And this is not the first time that Chris has gotten in trouble. He's gotten in trouble in Somalia. Um, he was accused of similar things like showing the, the poor part of Somalia um, and he was arrested and, and I guess kicked out of the country. And there's a video right here I'm going to show and we're going to talk about it right after this. A YouTuber named Chris got arrested and deported from Somalia for disrespecting the people, actually throwing money in their faces. Let me show you this clip explaining it. We'll come back and discuss. The first time in the history of Africa, this man got arrested in Somalia for exploiting the poor. 
SUs likes traveling to developing countries, goes into their poorest neighborhoods and slums, and makes savior type content. Now I'm going to explain what he did and I'll give you the cultural context behind it. In this video, he threw money at a young boy who looked really, really terrified of him. In another video, he was throwing money at people who were sitting in sidewalks. In Somalia, it's very, very disrespectful to throw money at poor people, at less fortunate people, and it's very... Okay, so yeah, so that was what happened in Somalia. And yes, this is, you know, I think Chris likes to take risk. You know, kudos to him. He's a, he's a big risk taker. Um, he was also arrested in Cuba. He said he spent um, 13 days in Cuba. And I guess it, it's, it's a part of what he does. You know, when journalists from CNN and BBC, they go into war tone areas and they show those images too. So I'm not going to say that Chris should not do that because everyone cannot create the same content, right? But my thing is that I believe that Chris has to be very careful because, you know, he has a wife and um, I think two kids in Toronto. So he has to be very careful. And based on some of the, because I've been following him for a while and based off some of the things that I, I, I've seen, I think he is someone that's just spontaneous. He goes in and, and he just film. And I believe that with this experience now, he's going to have to take a different approach. He's going to have to try to learn some of those errors before. Because, for example, like I don't really know much about Trinidad. I was extremely surprised when I watched pretty much all of his videos and I saw him interviewing the 6, the 7, and the 9. Because, you know, I'm born in Jamaica and that is something that growing up in Jamaica that could not happen because you can't go from one rival gang to another. That is dangerous. So it is a big risk he's taking. Um, people love the content. You know, people like to see risky content. But I think for someone that has a family, he's going to have to be extremely careful after this and also like i i watch uh, um when he was in jamaica he, he he went to tivoli gardens and as i said like he's just a spontaneous guy the taxi driver didn't want to drop him off in tivoli gardens but he went nonetheless and i'm watching the content and i'm like man do you really know tivoli gardens because tivoli gardens you can't just walk in and and, and video anything like that you have to get permission and there was an incident where um, someone like knocked the camera out of his hand to stop filming. So to me, I believe that, you know, as a fellow YouTuber, like we would not want to see, you know, anyone traveling the Caribbean or traveling Africa or anywhere and getting hurt. So I believe that he's going to have to take some more precautions, learn about some of these places before he goes in because you know, we're living in some dangerous times and I just think he has a family to live for. So Chris, you got to take some more precaution. Once you get over this, this um, thing that's going on in Trinidad and Tobago, you have to reevaluate how you, you shoot your content. So yeah, so that's my two cents and tell me what you think in the comment section and remember to like, share and subscribe.